Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is the world of Wayne. We're going to be doing part three of the Great White Shark Jaws build. Now part three, nothing really to do with the whole diorama, although I am going to show you that in this video of what we're going to, but we're going to be doing a resin test. Now I have never ever worked with resin i haven't got a clue about it all i know is that i ordered this on amazon because for some reason there's an industrial shortage of resin at the moment i've got one kilogram of the stuff so in here i've got 770 grams of actual resin and in here i've got 320 grams of hardener it's procast mix and i got this from amazon uh, and what i intend to do is i'm going to be putting i'm going to mix first off 500 grams of this together I'm going to be putting this shark head that I have made previously in this glass, which has got sand in the bottom, which hasn't been treated, I may add. There's no PVA in there. That's just loose sand. And I filled the shark up, as you can see here, with clay. Now, I did this quite a while ago, so this clay is now rock hard. That's going to weigh it to the bottom and hopefully stop any air bubbles getting in. Now, if I just put that to one side, the ratio that we're going to be mixing these in is basically uh, for every uh, one part you put a third in. So basically, they do give you an instruction sheet here. So if I was to use one kilogram, that'd be 770 grams of that and obviously 230 grams. I'm going to be doing 500 grams, which means that I'm going to have 385 grams of that and I'm going to be having 115 grams of this. Now, when it comes to mixing, I am using some digital scales and I am mixing by weight, not volume. Uh, now the more viscous liquid is the resin. So I've got different cups to put this in, but basically I'll be putting the hardener into the resin and then mixing it in that cup. And once I'm happy with the solution, I'm gonna pour it into another cup. And then from that cup, I'm gonna pour it into here. And when I do pour it into there, I'm gonna be using this because it's quite a long way down. If I start pouring it from the top, again, I might have a risk of bubbles as it's pushing air into the resin. So I'm gonna run it down this channel of this, kind of like that in there like that. Don't know if it's gonna work, haven't got a clue. I mean, it's gonna be hitting Bruce's head anyway, so he's gonna be covered. Now, what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the solution, because I'm only gonna be putting a centimeter in there, for the rest of the solution, I'm gonna start filling the shark up. And this is the shark here. I'm going to be pouring it into his mouth and you will see that he has got a hole which the stand was on. I'm actually keeping that hole there while I fill it up. So I'm going to sort of fill him up like that, pouring it down there. Uh, it's just going to allow a bit of venting to go on from both ends here. So uh, I don't know how hot this is going to get, but uh, well, that's going to be uh, something that I can't go back on um, once I've started to pour for that. But I don't know if I've showed you where I am with the diorama. So here's just a quick update about the diorama. So I'm on the move, I'm in the workshop at the moment. I'm gonna show you the diorama now. There is a bit of continuity here. Later on in this video, you're gonna see that I rushed downstairs to pour some resin over the surface of this uh, diorama because I created too much resin. I didn't realize that at all. Uh, so you're gonna see resin already in the base here. But this is my fish tank. Uh, it's basically 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. It looks like that. There's the uh, base that we made before. As you can see, I've just mentioned we already put resin in it, but the resin is only lying the base. Now, it was already sealed anyway. So as you can see, the resin has only penetrated the sand by about, I don't know, a millimeter, which I knew was going to happen. So uh, that's actually deliberate, and you'll see why uh, in the end result. Uh, I'm not worried about the bed there looking a different colour to the surface, although that's going to probably dry the same sort of colour anyway, but we'll see. But uh, that's what it looks like. The seaweed you see in there is actually real seaweed, picked up from Canvey Beach, and I've already encased this harpoon little jabbing device in resin as well. So that's going to dry in about four hours. Now, because I've put such a shallow depth of that resin on there, as you can see, it is quite clear. The, uh, I'm hoping that when I pour the, the, the next pour of resin on top of that, it's not going to have to worry about air bubbles or anything because that base is now completely sealed. But that is what the diorama looks like. It will have a blue backing on it. It's not going to have that Lions Estate billboard. I've been putting this off and putting this off uh, because I'll tell you what, I've never worked with it and I'm absolutely terrified of it. Now, I don't know if this stuff is toxic, but when I do read the instructions here with all the warning labels, I'm guessing it is. So I'm going to need the proper attire. So I'm going to change into that now. So I've just put on my lab coat. I have got a respirator here. Don't know if I'm going to need it. 
but uh, I won't be wearing it at the moment. I'll uh, take that off when I'm actually pouring the resin, but when I'm doing that and mixing it, I will have that on. You just won't see my face. Uh, and obviously I've got some gloves here as well, which I'm gonna <laughs> put on as well. Look, it looks like I'm going into a, a nuclear environment, not, not a resin environment. This might be the non-toxic stuff for all I know, but it's better to be safe than sorry, isn't it? So uh, make sure if you are following me along on this and you wanna do this for yourself, you are kitted up with the correct uh, protective material. But I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix 500 grams of resin. So once again, if I just get my little data sheet out, what that means is it means I'm gonna be mixing 385 grams of resin to 115 grams of hardener. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna put Bruce into the mixture here and make sure he's flat. There's no gaps around him. I like the look of that. So he's ready to go pretty much. So I'll put that to one side and we'll bring over the scales. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill two glasses full of what I need first. So I'll put the glass on there first. This is just a plastic uh, stirrer. Turn it on so it zeroes out, which it is. And I'll put, what did I mention before? 385 grams of resin in this cup. Going up. Two, three hundred. We get in there. I'm meticulous with this to the gram. <laughs> so we've got three hundred and eighty-five grams on the nose of resin in that cup. And as you can see, we do have air bubbles in there already, but they are rising. So I'm just going to leave that to do that for a little while just while I create the hardener. That's zeroed out perfectly. And with the hardener, I'm gonna be putting 115 grams. Hundred and fifteen grams on the nose. God, I'm good at pouring, aren't I? <laughs> now, one other item I've got for the pour is a hair dryer. When the air bubbles rise to the surface, I'm just going to give them a quick blast with a hair dryer, and that should get rid of any air bubbles. I've pinched this for Mrs. World away. She doesn't know about it. So I can take the scales away, and we're ready to start mixing this mixture now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pouring the hardener into the resin as you can see most of the bubbles have already come to the surface on that resin but i'm going to be quite quiet while i do this because when i've got my respirator on you can't hear me very well <laughs> so i'll pour this in just about got the right size glass for this <laughs> And then I'm going to stir it, but we don't want to stir it too quickly. But it is going to have about five minutes of stirring. So, as you can see, I'm stirring it like this. I don't know if you can hear me through this respirator. But we don't want to work bubbles into it. That's the first thing. That's why I'm spinning it slow. Change direction. You'll be able to see little wisps of white in there from the hardener. That's what we want to get rid of. We don't want any of that in there at all. But it's not going to cure straight away, so we don't have to rush doing this. It is going to be still quite viscous when we do it. And you want to make sure that your spatula, that I'm using just a tongue depressor here, goes right to the bottom of the glass. Because you want to get every single bit of this hardener and resin mixed together. Now I will be pouring this into a third glass, just in case there's some hardener stuck in a different location and then I'm ready to start the pour. So I'll mix this until it's as clear as I can get it. Now just having a quick look at that, I've still got wisps in there. I wanna make sure they're all gone. Get right around the edges there. Okay, I'm not seeing any wisps in there now, so I think that mixture is pretty much good to go. So, what I'm going to do 
Let's take off this, and I'm going to put a towel down because I don't want to get my uh, surface dirty. Bring over the shark. I've got my little thing here which I'm going to pour in, and I'm going to gently pour that on top of Bruce. Now I've put about a centimetre in there. So I'm just going to leave that. It's bubbling away on one side there. If you can see that on the side camera. But uh, while it's like this, it should be okay. I'm just going to put that to one side. I'm only doing it by a centimetre at a time. Because I'm going to be filling up the shark now. Little jig that I always use for things like this. I'm going to get the shark in a position like that and I'm going to start pouring the resin into his mouth. Oops, it's gone around the outside. I poured that a little bit too fast, but that's okay. As a matter of fact, it didn't need that much. It's actually just closed up already there. So uh, I thought that was going to be completely hollow all the way through. I think it's uh, where I've sealed it all together. It can't really go anywhere else. I'm not worried about the resin that I've spilt on the shark because that's going to disappear later on as well. But uh, that's going to basically seal the mouth of the shark up here. I'll be sealing up the hole there. That's pretty much done. So I might as well just pour a little bit more of this resin uh, into the shark. I've already got about a centimetre. I don't really want to put any more in, but I will. <laughs> So the first problem that I've noticed is I've mixed far too much resin for this one pour. I didn't think I'd use that. And I'm already uh, about two centimetres in on the shark. So uh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is obviously when the water's hit the round surface of the shark, it's made it concave. So it uh, looks a bit silly in there, to be honest with you. But it's doing the job. Um, I don't know what I meant to do with all of this. <laughs> uh, hmm. Perhaps I'll uh, make a mould for Mrs. Welder Wayne of something. What do you reckon? <laughs> Whew, okay, that's done. Now with the excess resin I've had, I've gone, and gone outside and poured it over the actual bed of the diorama. So now I've got a resin base to pour resin on top of. That's gone absolutely brilliant. And I'll show you that when we actually come to pour, <laughs> so out of breath, <laughs> the diorama. Because uh, again, I don't know how quick this stuff starts to go out. The shark, I said, is completely sealed because that resin's not going down anymore there. I said I will fill up that hole there. And then the uh, other shark that I've got here, uh, there's no air bubbles and it's clear as pie. I might just need to clear up a little bit of resin I've got on the outside of the glass. But what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to focus a camera on that. We'll come back to it in four hours and see what that looks like. A few moments later. Now, as you can see from this little video here, it did bubble for a good, I'd say, 10 to 15 minutes after the pour, just expelling any air that was trapped below the shark. But uh, as you can see with the final result of the pour, and this is with the second pour on top, there is absolutely no bubbles whatsoever. Now, I've learned quite a deal with this, and as you can see, one of the big things I've learned is the paint. The paint was just an acrylic paint with no varnishing on top, no gloss on top, nothing. So it's primer and acrylic paint, and the paint has come away. It looks like an Artex ceiling, to be honest with you. On the second layer, just before the jaw there, you'll also see that uh, it's starting to do the same thing uh, after the second pour. This is about half an hour after the second pour. Now, the other thing I've learned is when I go out to the workshop and see how that looks, uh, this hasn't cured as fast as the one inside did. And obviously, in the UK, it was cold last night, so the cold environment meant it's taking longer to cure. So I have turned uh, this heater on in there. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. It will cure eventually. I'm in no rush for the one outside anyway, um, but that will eventually cure up. But I mean, the first one, the first pour, cured absolutely perfectly. As a matter of fact, I think this whole test was pretty successful apart from the paint. But as you can see with the main shark where I painted it on directly, just in a couple of places because I didn't want to destroy the thing, uh, that shark was treated with a varnish and there's been no reaction to the paint at all. So what I need to do is Hooper and the cage, which I've just got here, 
needs that same varnish over it. I haven't varnished this, so I'm going to do that. Even though I did paint this with lacquer paints, I don't know if that makes a difference or not, rather than acrylic paints, uh, I will put a semi-gloss coat over. The reason I'm using semi-gloss is because I want that underwater wet silky look, even with the resin's going to make that anyway. So uh, there you go. Now, I enjoyed that. I've learned a lot. I said I think the biggest thing that I've had is definitely the paint. I'm not too worried about the uh, the resin. As you saw, there's no air bubbles. I didn't have a problem with the air bubbles at all. Uh, and I think it's going to work. The problem is I won't be using this brand of resin when it comes time to actually pour it into the fish tank. I'm going to be using this stuff off Amazon, which again is quite a fast curing stuff, but I'm not going to be pouring more than a centimeter each time. So a centimeter every four hours, and it's going to be roughly about 20 to 25 centimeters. That's near on a week. <laughs> of having to get up every four hours to do that uh, which is going to be quite a challenge but I hope you got as much out of this as I have it's a learning curve for me and uh, uh, when it's fully dry and I can turn it upside down I'll probably show you that on the live streams and all of that but as for now so this is what it's looking like and uh, quite a successful test I think so uh, there we go still a little bit uh, liquidy on top as I said I only poured that about half an hour ago but uh, there you go. <laughs> anyway, listen, I really do hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. And by all means, check out Spruverse uh, channel. Put the link up here for his video for his resin pour test. And you can see the results again from another angle with uh, different conditions and different stuff as well. Uh, what resin actually can do. <laughs> it's all fun. Anyway, listen, take care.